Hey there strangers, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you happen to be in the world. So today we are going to be discussing a topic named constructor chaining. So this is a basic, uh, basically an idea in the OOP. If you don't know about constructor overloading, then uh, you might wanna check that before uh, learning about constructor chaining because it's uh, the prerequisite for the constructor chaining is constructor overloading so let's begin so what is constructor chaining so the constructor chaining uh, is a basic idea in which a constructor a single constructor class and other constructor in the same class are in the base class i am hamad khizar i am going to be presenting this topic today so what's the main idea let's uh, understand it with the help of an diagram so uh, we have uh, any class we want to create an, an object and uh, we want to invoke uh, its first constructor the first constructor has been invoked but its body is not executed rather it has passed the control to the second constructor and uh, the second constructor is also its body is also not executed and it has passed the control to the third constructor and the third constructor executed its body and returned back the control to our second constructor after receiving the control from the third constructor second constructor body is going to be executed and then thus after that uh, it's going to give back the control to our first constructor so this, this is how we chain up the, uh, the constructor so one constructor is calling to other constructor and the other constructor is calling to the third constructor so and after executing its body the third constructor is giving back the control to the second constructor and after uh, successfully executing second constructor body the control is going to be given to our first constructor so this is our main idea of constructor chaining so we are going to be learning this uh, example with the help of uh, an C-sharp program so it's demo time so uh, in this demo i have created a simple project named chain of constructors it has uh, three classes uh, program class which does have a main method in which we are going to be invoking our other classes classes so we have first we have ASP.NET uh, user class uh, this is a very simple class in which uh, we have three properties uh, an email address a username and a profile image we have uh, as well um, uh, we have three constructors and, uh, and a private method uh, uh, our private method is just to validate the email address if it's validated it's going to return true otherwise it's going to return false so in our constructors, uh, let's investigate our very first constructor, which receive uh, only one argument. It's going to be validating the email address. If it's valid, then it's going to assign uh, the past argument to our property. Otherwise, we are going to provide a system generated email address for this property. Then we are going to be extracting the username from the email address then we are providing our default image path for the profile image path so uh, that's how we are initializing the properties in our first constructor then we are just simply printing the message here same logic is applied here except we are receiving an additional parameter which is going to be assigned to our property username and the same concept is applied to our constructor number three uh, which receive an other additional parameter uh, profile image path for the object so basically we are uh, validating the email address we are uh, assigning a username we are assigning the profile image and then we are just printing the message so i have modified this class to use the concept of constructor chaining so uh, we have another class uh, a modified form of asp.net user uh, so we have named it asp.net user final so as you can see we have the same property uh, username email address and profile image and we have three uh, constructors but in these constructor we have used the concept of constructor chaining by using the keyword this 
so uh, whenever uh, this our first constructor receive a call it's going to be uh, invo uh, it's gonna invoke our very next constructor so uh, this is going to use a keyword this and uh, it's going to pass the received email uh, to our second constructor and an empty string for the username and the, our second constructor is going to do the same thing uh, except it's going to provide a third argument which is going to be an empty string so basically if we create ASP.NET user final uh, object with a single parameter it's going to invoke first we are going to get control here and the control is going to be shifted to our second constructor then the second constructor is going to be calling the third constructor and then uh, we, we are going to have control here so let's uh, see this uh, this class in action so let me put the breakpoints So that we can see what's going on so uh, in program dot cs so i have written code here which is going to create a create three objects so uh, let's uh, run this uh, application and investigate them one one by one so as we have executed our program uh, let me shrink it down So uh, as you can see, I have uh, I'm going to um, pressing the uh, keyword F11, which means step into. So we are here. We are creating our first object, and we are passing just one argument. I'm going to press F11. Uh, let me zoom out. So here we have received our our uh, control here. So this is we have received a uh, email address of the user and uh, we are not executing the body of the constructor rather we are going to be using uh, this keyword and we are going to be passing uh, the receive email to uh, to our very next constructor and an empty string for the username so uh, let me show you with the help of the same example that we were learning before so here we have a generated a request to create an object the request has been received from, uh, to our first constructor and first constructor is going to give the control to the second constructor the so same things is going uh, here so let me show you f11 so um, the first bo uh, constructor body is not executed and the control has been given to the second constructor and second constructor is going to do the same thing it's going to pass the uh, control to the third constructor uh, with the receive email address and uh, receive username and empty uh, string for the in profile image path let me press f11 so uh, as you can see that the body of the constructor one is not yet yet been invoked neither the constructor two body has been executed uh, the constructor uh, the control has been given to our uh, highest constructor constructor number three so we are uh, assigning a value to the email address and uh, the pass email address um, as you can see and uh, we are splitting the username and uh, assigning it to the username if it's not provided so this is the main uh, validation happening here if we, uh, username is not provided then we are going to be extracting the username from the email address and for, uh, same thing goes for the profile image path if it's not provided it's empty then we are going to be assigning a default image path for the profile image otherwise we are going to be providing the same uh, profile image uh, that has been passed as, a, as an argument so that's how the flow is going to be working as you can see that the name uh, the email address has been given as uh, which we were provided and we extracted the username uh, which was not provided from the email address and uh, we have assigned the uh, default image pass which is also not provided so uh, after that let me show you the example here so the um, basically the control has been given to the third con constructor the third constructor has executed its body and it's now has given uh, the control back to the constructor number two what constructor number two is going to be doing it's going to be executing its body after executing successfully its body then it's going to give back the control to 
very first control controller so let me show you second constructor body has been involved and our very first constructor which was originally supposed to be invoked but it's not uh, it's uh, it's executed at last so basically it was a recursive call the constructor receive the control here it provide uh, it give the control or it invoke the second constructor with the help of this keyword and arguments and uh, the sec uh, second constructor is going to be invoking the third constructor after the third constructor has been invoked its body is uh, completely executed the control is going to be given back to the second constructor second constructor body is going to be executed then the control will be given to our very first uh, constructor this is a process of chains so uh, we have uh, so as you can see from this diagram uh, we have uh, chained the, uh, all the constructors in a process in which uh, some validation or some code that are unique or uh, common to um, uh, each constructor can be executed with the help of constructor chaining process so let's further explore so we have created our very first object user one let me and we can inspect here we have um, given a um, default path for the image and we have extracted username from the email and use, uh, email was provided for the user one and now we are going to uh, investigate user number two so for the user two we are providing two uh, two parameter one is email address and other is uh, its username so it's going to be uh, initially calling the constructor number two and constructor number two is going to give uh, going to be invoking the constructor number three uh, with the past email address and past username and an empty string for the profile image path so basically the third constructor is going to be completely executed first so as you can see the third constructor has been invoked and the properties have been uh, assigned and then we are going to be giving back the control to the our original or the second constructor which was supposed uh, to be called but which is not called uh, because we have seen uh, this uh, this constructor process so as you can see the recursively it's been called uh, first the third constructor is called then the, uh, the original constructor has been called let me step into for the, our third user which we are providing the all three properties values as argument so let's see so it's going to be executing the uh, third constructor so if we just continue and you can see that so basically um, if least uh, value is provided then the uh, maximum validation and maximum com common code that we have changed in our process would be going to be called and uh, for the as you can see that if we uh, invoke uh, the uh, the if we want to create an object with the two values so uh, the third and second constructor was uh, called and if we uh, supply all the values necessary then the and only uh, the third constructor is going to be called so this is a, a basic process for the constructor chaining so uh, let me summarize it for you it's a chain of constructor in which a uh, one constructor calls to another constructor and uh, the and we can uh, chain um, as many constructor as we want we can chain the constructor uh, in the parent or base class so that was a basic idea uh, to chain the constructor so that they can uh, call each other and um, execute some common uh, code um, that can be a validation that can be um, assigning uh, default values whatsoever um, so the that was the main idea behind constructor chaining so uh, kindly if you have any question regarding this please do post in the comment uh, kindly share and subscribe thanks for watching my video if you want to uh, learn about any topic you can suggest in the comments and uh, hopefully i will uh, get back to you and will uh, start working on that uh, specific topic thank you